So um, it brings us on quite nicely um, in, in terms of that. And, um, yeah, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm of the same reasons. The fact that – here's the other thing. I mean, like you say, Matt, Hulk Hogan had, had held that belt for a, a long while. I think um, I think I read somewhere like it was um, over – like well over 2,000 consecutive days or something that he had that reign. And and at that time, Matt, I think it's worth pointing out that nobody was beating Hogan then. Nobody. Um, so the fact that The Undertaker did it, albeit with the interference of Ric Flair, um, it was a massive deal. And I think it showed you that, you know, just one year later, The Undertaker um, winning the title. You know, the odd thing for me about it, Matt, is the fact that, even though The Undertaker was playing pretty much the heel, I always felt like I never saw him as a heel. I don't know how no. you saw him, but even though he was against Hogan, the most sort of notorious baby face there ever was, they really made an exception with The Undertaker because I felt like The Undertaker, he was quite scary. And I know the kids were a little bit scared of him sometimes, like when they've done the close-ups. But I think in, in general, I think that he had he, he wasn't your typical heel. He wasn't going out to do anything nasty against fans in particular to get heat. He wasn't doing those kind of things, was he? Um, and, and it was a weird thing because if you think, Matt, of the bad luck Jake Roberts got about, you know, when he had that feud with Hogan and unfortunately everyone chanted DDT, so that was the end of his run with Hogan because they wanted Hogan to just be, you know, the pure baby face. But, but with the undertaker, Matt, it was almost the exception that they were going to let that slide. And, you know, they saw something with this guy, but yeah, you know, I, I just, how did you see him back then, Matt? Was you, you sort of the same with the undertaker? I guess he was kind of scary, but then also he was really cool, you mm. know, because he was the guy that um, he could just get up from ridiculous amounts of punishment. And there was just something like, entertaining about that at the time because you had your sort of typically cartoonish characters you know that old warrior and Hulk Hogan Mm -hmm. and they were going to do what was right but then Undertaker you know he did have that kind of third dimension he wasn't a good guy he wasn't a bad guy he was just going out there wrestling the way that he wrestles it's not kind of his fault if people want to latch onto him people like Ric Flair just want to use him Mm -hmm. to further their own agenda Mm -hmm. you know that didn't it, uh, technically make him a bad guy in my eyes either so he, he was always an interesting character and he still is you know he's always played that sort of middle ground I, mean, I know they tried to do angles with him where he's a heel in the face but he's always had that kind of thing where he's just himself you know you yeah. can't really expect too much for him you can't really expect to be betrayed by him because you know you shouldn't be trusting him that much anyway mm-hmm. well there we go so yeah that moved on very nicely um, yeah so he went in uh, Matt's number number six he's in at my number five um, for that title victory against Hulk Hogan, which um, it, it was a really good, um, it is a good moment. Like, yeah, I'd encourage people to watch that because there's a good bit of history there for those people that, you know, maybe are not that familiar um, with, with the older Survivor Series. That's probably one of the better Survivor Series as well. Um, okay, Matt, I think we should now head over to your number five. Okay, yeah, and uh, let's talk about like, how Survivor Series are definitely... Uh, the event for debuts because I've got another debut on the list. Um, we've had Sting, we've had Undertaker, so let's talk about the debut of the Shield. Mm, um, okay. And they go a little bit further up on my list than the Undertaker because mm-hmm. you're getting free for the price of one here, you know, <laughs> and they're all three top main eventers. And if we looked at Undertaker back in '90 and said like this guy was the future of the company, we can mm-hmm. look at these three guys and safely say that uh, like, these guys are who WWE look at and say, well, you're going to be the future of the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, I, I think they came in with a lot of impact. Um, they they just caused havoc, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, smashing Raya back about. And you know, I, I I just felt like as soon as I saw them, I knew they were forced to be reckoned with. I knew they were like a cohesive unit, and I, I just was really intrigued by them. You know, and, and I think they really delivered since then. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm with you on that one. Um, they, they I'll, I'll first of all say they are not on my list. Um, they definitely were going to get a mention. I wrote them down um, because I think as well, Matt, it's worth pointing out that, you know, all three of them are now or have been world champions. Um, and which, which you know, um, I mean, when was it that they debuted? Was that 2012, was that? Well, along yeah. those lines, I'm sure it was. So, I mean, they've 12. had, what, in four years, they're all, they've all been champion. That's, 
that's quite a feat when you think about it, Matt, because, you know, it's not, it's not, um, you don't normally get all three guys going places, you know, you get the one normally, um, but you don't normally get all three that go on and do things. And I think, you know, that's sounding too harsh. Dean Ambrose was the one that people thought, eh, he'll be the one that doesn't, you know, he hasn't got anything about him. He, he'll be, you know, the one stuck. But even he went on to, to finally get get his career, of course. Uh, our favourite friend on the, the podcast, Roman Reigns, um, not only did he win the belt, but he also won the heart of Vince McMahon, it seems, as well, um, <laughs> because we've seen him uh, quite a lot. Um, and, of course, Seth Rollins, who arguably is, you know, probably in my you know, top five in the company right now as far as out-and-out workers go on his day. Um, so all three of these guys, Matt, are, you know, really talented guys. Um, do you, just as a, a side note on the Shield, Matt, because the Shield were, were pretty cool. Um, they were heels. But do you think, because I look back at the Shield, Matt, and I don't know what you think about it, but I think WWF kind of, uh, sorry, WWE, um, getting caught up in the time zone now. Uh, yeah, I felt like WWE kind of cashed that in too early. Um, and I, I really felt there was like more of a run for them as baby faces um, with merchandise oh, yeah. and all the rest of it. And I, I, honestly, I, when I think about it, especially now, I just think wouldn't wouldn't Roman Reigns have been so much better portrayed if he had those two guys beside him? Um, I know it's not sort of ideal if you're a Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose fan, but just the way they tried to get Roman Reigns. You know, as the cool guy, they took all the best bits of the shield and put it on Roman. They kept him with the gear, the music, the entrance. But you know, it was the three of them that made it come together. And I felt Roman's spot was always the guy that gets the hot tag and does the impact moves. But um, what do you, what do you think about that, Matt? Because it, it just seemed like it was cut too too quickly um, for um, those guys. I guess everyone has like memories of the, of the day that uh, Seth. I uh, sort of stabbed him in the backs with his steel chair. Um, I, I think everyone was a little bit upset, like, no, don't do it. Why have you done this? Um, and I'm kind of still a little bit sore about that. I mean, I, I was really into their sort of group. Sure. And it was really cool, wasn't it? It was cool to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. fan. You know, mm-hmm. you'd go out there. And it was, um, it was, you know, as much for the guys as well as, like, even kids could get into it. You know, and they would just go out there and just beat people up. And who doesn't like that? And if you're Roman, you know, you're a guy the size of Roman, and people have criticised, like, saying he's he's got kind of a more limited uh, in-ring arsenal compared to Dean and Seth, you know. And it did make Roman look really good, wasn't it? I mean, the other two people sort of hoisted him onto him, and he did the power bomb, you know. He, like you mm-hmm. said, he was the powerhouse. And, he, and he, it's just much like it was with Diesel, wasn't it? Diesel was much cooler when he was with Sean, you know. And then, But when you go out on your own, it's a lot harder to actually... Uh, to carry your own weight. So, you know, I think that there should have been another good year because the timing as well to end it was a little bit weird considering they just went to an all-in-all-out war with Evolution mm. and then, like, only a few nights later then to be like, oh, he's one of us. Well, why yeah. did you bother going uh, to a war with this guy? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point, uh, to be honest with you. Yeah, and it, it just ended so fast. There wasn't, I mean... You could probably argue the same about this year with Seth Rollins, the way that term come about. But, um, yeah, you know, no real depth to it, unfortunately, um, which was a shame. Um, yeah, so um, good call. Uh, I'm glad um, I didn't put that on my list, and you have. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, Matt's, what was that, number five there, Matt? I think we're at now with you. Um, so moving on uh, to the more, you know, we're down to number four. So, um, yeah, I think we'll get that out from me. And my number four is going back to 2002 uh, Madison Square Garden, which was the debut match of the Elimination Chamber, um, the first one they ever did. And uh, my moment, really, it's... I mean, uh, first of all, that match was really good. Um, It's probably one of my more fondest Elimination Chambers. I'm not a huge Elimination Chamber fan just because... As soon as they started having those pay per views called Elimination Chamber, I just felt it was like forced that the the moment you're between Rumble and WrestleMania, you have to have these this match, um, and it, it just seemed like it was a bit bit too false, um, and the 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 odds about it just seemed like it you know a bit hokey to me. But the original concept, which uh, apparently was um, you know, designed by Eric Bischoff, and you know that the wrestlers in it were at the time. You know, we had um, the likes of 
uh, Triple H, who was the then um, WWE champion. But the, the main thing about it for me was seeing Shawn Michaels, who um, come back that year at SummerSlam, to, and he had this massive rivalry with Triple H. It was a really good feud when you look back at it. Um, and, you know, I, I honestly didn't see Shawn Michaels winning it that night. I remember watching it live, and like, it was really, for me, it was like it was one of those moments which I'm pleased to say, I, you know, it's nice when you don't know the the, the result, um, and it's nice when it shocks you. And um, I think it was a, it was a great moment, like the confetti coming down, Shawn Michaels, that huge return of this this iconic legend. Um, even though he would only hold that belt for I think it was a month, um, if that um, the the world heavyweight title. But it was just the moment itself. Um, I just thought was really good, and, and like I said, I think it was probably. I would say it has to be in the top three Elimination Chamber matches of all times. Of course, the first is always normally the best, um, but it's certainly ranking up there with, with the top for me. And, um, yeah, just the rivalry between him and Triple H was, was so good. Matt, um, first of all, is that in your list? And secondly, your your memories, I guess, if, if it isn't. Oh, yeah, it, it does appear on my list. Yeah. Um, I, 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 well, I'll just say it's like on my list it's, it's, it's my number two on my list okay we'll fair enough when I get to that we'll get to it but, yeah. um, but I'll talk about it now anyway because we're, we're on the top yeah, of it yeah, yeah. Um, but for me the thing that really pushed it to that point is the uh, the actual match itself I mean we hear so much spoken about Hell in the Cell but if like I was a wrestler and they said to me you know like would you rather be in the Hell in the Cell or the Elimination Chamber I'd rather be in the Hell in the Cell mm-hmm. at least I know the floor is not made of steel you know <laughs> I wouldn't want to be taking too many body slams on that steel grate outside the ring and the, and the pods count. How many times has someone gone through that sort of supposedly bulletproof glass? You Flexi know? glass, Just, yeah. <laughs> I, and the, yeah, there's... there's just, I think there's a hundred more ways to hurt someone inside a uh, an elimination chamber because even the uh, sort of construct is made of steel chains. Mm. You know, that's got mm. to be uh, a lot more painful than a mesh to go into. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, it, it was just the, uh, the all the right people in this match. We always refer to uh, refer to Shawn Michaels as the guinea pig for all these kind of debut matches, and he, he, here he is proving it again in another kind of first ever kind of match. And you know, you would want to be in there with someone like Triple H, who's like uh, capable of, of pulling off a great match as well. People like Jericho and Kane, the veteran, you know, and people like Rob Van Dam with the agility to pull off like uh, incredible moves inside this. Uh, structure. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think they got it incredibly right on that night, and all the right people. So it all came together. Sure. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. So that's Matt's number two. Uh, my number four. Matt, what is your number four then? Okay, my number four. I, th- I think you probably had this in your one as well, but it's going to be um, the Rock turns heel. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> yes, that. that well, I will say before you carry on, Matt, that uh, that becomes my number three. So that's uh, that's. That's a very nice little uh, little opener there for us to, to move on. But, yeah. but uh, w- what was it for you, Matt, that, uh, that made you, you put it in at your, your number four? Well, it sort of become a staple, didn't it, not to trust Vince McMahon, mm-hmm. you know, and like, uh, oh, you know, you can't, he can't be trusted and he's always got something up his sleeve. But this was one of the original times when that was, you know, true because we wasn't really expecting it to come and we wasn't really expecting it from The Rock. We thought... This is like one of those situations where WWE like gets behind someone and they will back them, you know, even if it's not going to plan. But unlike certain people these days, mm-hmm. they pull the trigger and say, you know what, this guy would be an incredible heel. Mm-hmm. He would, uh, you know, he'd be much more effective and he could do what he wants and people would love to hate him. But, you know, a little bit too afraid to do that these days. But this is uh, the perfect example of how to do that and get it right and actually make a wrestler more of a star for doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but he had left. He broke away from the Nation of Domination. He became the people's champion for, for a little while. And yeah. um, he was just getting that little bit of babyface rub. And then... Um, this this was just this was classic for me because you know you think no there's no way they'll they'll go back on like they'd never do that now no way no. would they do that now they'd be so happy with a merchandise that someone's selling that you know forget turning him heel um, but but that's what made it so good you just you just didn't think it was going to happen and and oh, no. the the few the the great thing is the roars before it I remember them quite vividly that. 
The Rock, 